For the later battle, see Battle of Lardingen. The Battle of Lardingen was fought on 29 July 1018. The German Emperor sent an army towards western Frisia to subdue the rebellious Count Dirk III. However, the Imperial Army was defeated by the Vladingers and fled in panic. Our knowledge of the battle is based on three chronicles, written shortly after the date. The Diversitate Temperum by the monk Alpertus of Metz, the Chronicon of Thietmar, Bishop of Merzburg, and in the Cambrai Bishop's Chronicle. Also, recent archaeological discoveries shed some light on Vladingen in the 11th century. Political Background in the early Middle Ages, Vladingen was part of the German Empire. The emperor at that time was Henry II. The northwestern part of the empire, Lower Lotharingia, was ruled by Duke Godfrey of Verdun. Frisia, the most peripheral part of the duchy, fell under the office of Adalbold, Bishop of Utrecht, and under Dirk III, to whom the coastal defence in the west had been delegated. Count Dirk had his power base in Vladingen, along the banks of the Merved, where it merged with the Maas River. The Causes Emperor Henry II organized his expedition against the Frisians and the Count for two reasons. Firstly, the Emperor wanted to clear the trade route between the port of Thiel and England. Dirk III forced the sailors who passed by on the Merved to pay a heavy tribute, and thus he endangered commerce and the tax incomes of the Emperor. Secondly, the rebellious count had illegally occupied lands that were claimed by the Bishop of Utrecht, and had even built a castle there. The bishoprics of Liege, Freer, and Cologne as well as several abbeys also had possessions in the region. The Preparations for the Expedition At Easter 1018, Emperor Henry II summoned a Reichstag in Nijmegen. He listened to the complaints of the merchants from Thiel and Bishop Adalbold II of Utrecht. Henry assigned Adalbold and Duke Godfrey to organize a punitive expedition against the rebellious Count Dirk. Within a few months, an army would be assembled in Thiel, the most important port in the Low Countries. The army would sail west along the rivers Vaal and Merved to Dirk's stronghold in Vladingen. Three more bishops would supply troops. Balderup II of Liege, Gerhard of Cambrai and the Archbishop Hiri Bear of Cologne. Bishop Balderup participated personally in the trip to Vladingen. Shortly beforehand, he had a new crypt constructed under the Basilica of Our Lady in Maastricht, which had collapsed on the day of his departure. This turned out to be a bad omen, because on the way downriver with the imperial fleet from Thiel to Vladingen the bishop fell ill. At Heroarden he left his ship and died on the very day of the battle. The size of the armies the numbers of soldiers mentioned in the chronicles are questionable. According to Thietmar, more than three imperial legions were killed, which implies that Henry II's army may have counted between 3,000 and 20,000 warriors. The Cambrai Chronicle states that in Vladingen, a thousand have put even twice 10,000 to flight, so the emperor would had sent 20,000 troops. However, this is only a literary quotation from the Bible which cannot be considered a realistic indication for the actual numbers on the battlefield. Verbruggen suggests that around the year 1100, armies usually comprised a few hundred warriors. Possibly Dirk III could have had a few hundred men at his disposal. It seems overdone for the emperor to send thousands of professional soldiers against him. A number of about 1,000 imperial warriors seems more likely. The course of the battle. The fleet with the imperial army drifted down the river and moored at Vladingen. After disembarkation the army marched towards Count Dirk's castle. The locals, who had seen the fleet approaching, had withdrawn within the castle and on higher grounds. Initially, Godfrey lined his men up around the castle, but then he ordered them to march towards a flat field, because it would be difficult to cross the ditches that were dug all over the place. During this maneuver, the Frisians unexpectedly appeared from an ambush and attacked. Someone cried out that the Duke had been killed, upon which panic broke out. The Imperial warriors hurried back to their ships, which had been moved to the middle of the stream by now, because of the lowered tide. 
they sank away in the soggy river bank or they drowned. Meanwhile, the Frisians in the castle gestured and shouted to their countrymen on the higher areas to attack the survivors from the rear. The fleeing soldiers were finished off with javelins. Only towards the end did Dirk III appear. He rode out of the castle with a few retainers. They hurried towards Duke Godfrey, who was still alive and fighting, but had been cornered by the Frisians. Thanks to Dirk's intervention the Duke was not killed. Dirk captured Godfrey, and took him to his castle. This ended the battle. The number of casualties suffered by the Imperial Army was enormous, while the losses on Dirk's side were minimal. The Aftermath After the battle, the opponents hurried to make peace again. Duke Godfrey was released promptly, and he arranged a reconciliation between Bishop Adelbold and Count Dirk III. Both parties probably realized that the defense of the Frisian coast against possible Viking attacks was more important than the quarrels between themselves. Nothing is known about the arrangements that the opposing parties made. It is likely that Dirk III had to make some concessions in order to obtain reconciliation, but concessions too were made on their part by the bishop and the emperor one of which being, perhaps, that a promise was given to leave the Count alone. In any event, no more armed conflicts have been recorded along the banks of the Merwood for three decades after the Battle of Lardingen. The location The early medieval chronicles do not make clear exactly where in Vladingen the events took place or which maneuvers the forces made. There have been several theories about the location. According to the latest views, the movements of the troops, the actual battle, and the flight all occurred in the present Vetternord Sepolder, a limited area, measuring about 500 by 500 meters, west and south of the center of Vladingen. From this spot one has a view over the Merved, the port, the Count's farmstead and the surrounding area, making it a strategic position. In 2007, ground radar and tracer investigations on the Church Hill revealed a circular shape, a few meters below the church floor, with a diameter of 27 meters. The material the ring was constructed with is unknown. Because of the location it is hard to carry out any further investigations. In the 12th century, the church has been built straight on this spot. The precise age of the ring is also unknown, but it must date from before the 12th century. It is tempting to regard this discovery as the remains of a ring castle built around the year 1000 by Count Dirk III. Earlier studies located the battle a few kilometers away from the present town center. Rotterdam's city archaeologist Hoke placed the battle three kilometers to the west, around the present municipal boundary with Marsluis. While de Graaf placed it two kilometers to the east, in the Babas boulder. Both views are unlikely. In the 18th and 19th century, historians stubbornly maintained that Dordrecht, not Vladingen, must have been the scene of action. Dordrecht is also situated along the Merved, 25 kilometers upstream. The Battle of Dordrecht can be found among several historians from that era, and it is still suggested by the Ardmodern historian. This hypothesis is untenable, not only because the sources about the battle in 1018 mention only Vladingen and not Dordrecht, but also because Dordrecht in the early 11th century was merely the name of a small river. The name of the place first appeared halfway during the 11th century, and no military stronghold is mentioned anywhere. There is no archaeological evidence for an 11th century settlement. Only after the floods of the mid-12th century, which dramatically altered the flow of the rivers, would the town acquire some importance. After 1150, Count Floris III established a toll in Dordrecht, and gradually it became the major town in the county of Holland. But that was long after 1018. Modern historians relegate the stories about Dordrecht to the realm of fiction. Why has Dordrecht been considered the location of the Battle of Lardingen for so long? The origin of this misconception lies in the Rhyme Chronique, a famous forgery attributed to a class Colin, a monk from Egmond Abbey who allegedly had put the history of Holland into verse in the 12th century. 
In reality, this class Colin never existed and the verse Chronicle was in fact written around the year 1700. It says, among many other things, that Dirk III founded a fortification and a village along the Merved, that he named the settlement Dordrecht, and that the famous battle in 1018 was fought on that location. The authoritative historian Jan Wagenaar believed this story, and invented the year 1015 for the founding of the town of Dordrecht. Wagenaar has been followed by many colleagues. Afterwards, he admitted that he had been fooled, and subsequently none has seriously believed the authenticity of Class Colin. Still, the idea that Dordrecht was founded in 1015 and that it was the scene of the Battle of 1018 has persisted. The significance of the Battle of Lardingen The Battle of Lardingen can be considered as the starting point for the independent county of Holland. In 1018, in Vladingen, Dirk III demonstrated that he would not be told what to do by any overlords. Later in the 11th century, German kings and emperors, and the bishops of Utrecht, made further attempts to subdue the counts of West Frisia. They almost succeeded when Duke Godfrey, the hunchback, and Bishop William drove the young Count Dirk V out of Frisia. However, Dirk regained his county, with the help of the Flemish Count Robert. In February 1076 they killed the Duke and in June 1076 they defeated the Bishop in the Battle of Isem. Literature. Graf. De. Orlog om Holland 1000-1375. Valoren. Hilversum. 1996. Hoek. C. De Hoftave Ladingen. Tiege Schrift Holland 5. 1973. 57-91. Ridder. De, de Slag Bij Vladingen, Analyse van de Beschrijving van Alpertus van Metzende Modulidic Locati van de Birch van Dirk III, Terra Nigra 164, 2006, 18-33, Rida, Der and C, van Loon, Het Profiel van Vladingen, VLAK Verslag 44, 2007. Roast P.B. Van der and C. Van Loon. Het Geophysische Onderzoek. VLAK Verslag 45. 2007. Verbruggen. J.F. The Art of Warfare in Western Europe during the Middle Ages. Boydell and Brewer. Woodbridge. 1997. Rame Kroniek van Klaas Colin. The Assassination of Godfrey the Hunchback.